Welcome to the Fall Protection Forum. My name is Kevin Dennis with Gravitech Systems and today's topic, aerial lifts. Aerial lifts are very popular and today we're going to discuss what your fall protection options are. Aerial lifts are selected because they're very fast, they're very efficient, I can haul both workers and equipment with them, and many times they're a safer choice when compared to portable ladders or built up scaffolding. But before we begin, I'd like to talk about what the purpose of the fall protection system is. There's a misconception out there that the fall protection system will protect the worker if the aerial lift should fail, and this isn't the case. The fall protection system's purpose is to prevent the worker from being ejected out of or falling out of the basket. The fall protection system will do very little and offer the worker very little protection if the lift should fail. So having said that, let's take a closer look at the aerial lifts and what your fall protection options are. Anytime a fall hazard is encountered, Gravitech Systems recommends applying the hierarchy of fall protection. The preferred solution to any hazard is elimination or substitution. Now in all likelihood, you've already conducted this assessment and that's the reason you've selected an aerial lift for the job, but if you haven't conducted this assessment yet, stand back, take a look at the work and see if the fall hazard can be eliminated or there's some other creative way to do the job that would prevent the worker from being up at heights. The second best solution is passive fall protection, also referred to as traditional fall protection. This category includes guardrails, handrails, covers over holes, any fall protection method that includes a physical barrier between the worker and the hazard. Now all aerial lifts come equipped with guardrails, so in many situations guardrails is all that's required. Look at your lift and for fall protection purposes we can put lifts into one of two categories vertical type lifts or extensible type lifts. Vertical type lifts include scissor lifts or personnel lifts, any lifting mechanism that the, that the man basket cannot be extended horizontally from the base. These vertical type lifts don't bounce. Extensible type lifts are lifts that are, are telescopic, uh, articulating, extensible, where the man basket can be extended horizontally away from the base of the unit. And the hazard with these ones is they can bounce during operation and the guardrails are not adequate. So look at your lift. If it's a vertical type lift and the guardrails are in place, gates lock, that's typically all that's going to be required by your governing body. Now many companies have a local policy that require workers to have additional fall protection, whether they're in a vertical type lift or an extensible type lift. So in response, many lift manufacturers are providing anchor points strategically located throughout the basket even in lifts that, that it's not legally required or historically didn't have them. So let's go and take a closer look at extensible type lifts and what to do inside of them. So that brings us to extensible lifts. Extensible lifts can be categorized by the basket being extended horizontally away from the base of the unit. Extensible lifts have, a, have an ejection problem that you don't find with vertical type lifts since the basket has a tendency to bounce or flex under normal operation. The basket is usually extended by an articulating or a telescopic boom and this flexing can also eject or bounce the operator out of the lift. For these reasons, governing bodies state that guardrails alone are not adequate. The person can get, get bounced over them. So that brings us to the third best solution on the hierarchy of fall protection and that's fall restraint. Fall restraint is, designed, is defined that the, the person physically can't reach the fall hazard. In this situation, the fall hazard would be the outside of the basket. This is where it gets tricky. The maximum length of lanyard I could give the person to prevent them from going over the lift is the distance from the anchor point to the top of the handrail. In this lift, it's only 20 inches. A 20 inch lanyard creates all kinds of challenges. I can't connect to the worker's dorsal D-ring, so I have to look at alternatives. Secondly, a 20 inch connection doesn't offer the worker much freedom of movement very difficult to get the work required done with a 20 inch connection inside of a, of a lift. So fall restraint usually isn't a reasonable solution. That brings us to the fourth option in our hierarchy of fall protection and that's fall arrest. Full body harness, dorsal connection, energy absorbing lanyard. Gravitech Systems often recommends getting a lanyard with an adjustment buckle in the middle of it. Having an adjustable lanyard Operators can be trained to give themselves the maximum allowable length to do the work, but yet shorten it down to prevent the amount of slack that's in the lanyard. 
Anchor locations on lifts vary. Many times they're at the mid rail, underneath the control panel, floor level. Worst case scenario on the outside of the boom or even on the inside of the man basket. But with an adjustable lanyard, you can see our operator here has adjusted it down, still has the full range of movement throughout the basket, yet if it were to bounce or flex, chances are he's just going to get rattled around the basket a little bit and not get ejected over the guardrail. So although it is fall to rest and it is possible to go out, the chances of that are unlikely. And that brings us to the clearance of the system. Since the manufacturers of the lanyards say that you need 18 feet of clearance with a six foot energy absorbing lanyard, there have been some concerns that operating the lift in that below 18 foot mark is an unsafe practice. But this, this isn't quite the case. That 18 foot of clearance requirement, first of all, is measured from the anchor point, which for us is two and a half feet inside the basket. And it also assumes full deployment of the shock absorber. To fully deploy a shock absorber, you have to be in that 300 pound range and it has to have a full on six foot fall. Given this lanyard that was shortened down, there was maybe only a foot, two feet of slack in it. So when that, when that uh, lift bounces or flexes, the person might only go a foot or two before that lanyard becomes taut. Yes, we're gonna see some shock absorber deployment and yes, even the lift might add some energy to the system, but I don't think we're gonna fully deploy the shock absorber. In all likelihood, the operator is near the edge of the basket or they're working outside of it and they have tend to, 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 to roll or get bounced out of it. And chances are they're not gonna be much more clearance than this, plus their body length and some shock absorber deployment. So, so I hope this helps. If you have any comments or questions regarding fall protection and aerial lifts, please contact Gravitech Systems. Or if you have any questions about fall protection and rescue training, engineering, or other fall protection related services, contact us through our website at www.gravitech.com or call us directly at 800-755-8455.